pirates haven't exactly been remembered for their good hygiene. Usually we think of them as smelly, dirty, unshaved brutes. And that image isn't entirely undeserved. As you might know, bathing was less common in pre-industrial times than it is today. Aboard a ship, it was totally unheard of. You couldn't just turn on the tap and get a tub full of hot water. The only source of heat was in the ship's kitchen, the cook room, little more than a large kettle in which to cook large quantities of stew. Secondly, water was sparse and primarily reserved for drinking. Sailors were not known for their cleanliness. As the day and weeks went by, dirt, sweat and grime would congeal and turn their skin almost black. Some might have a wash every third day, and that was limited to just dunking yourself with a bucket of seawater, in which soap was totally useless. Other sailors required a storm, an unwanted swim, or even ritual dunking into the sea to be washed clean. If the clothes got wet, they might not even change. It was a common problem that lazy sailors kept their wet clothes on, and even went to bed with them. This would not only produce an awful smell, but be directly unhelpful. More cleanly sailors would get a change from their sea chest, and otherwise change clothes every third day. Of course, this varied from person to person. Clothes could be washed in salt water, and hung up in the rigging to dry. One pirate was documented as having 11 spare shirts in his sea chest, while his shipmate and brother had only three. Of course, pirates had the additional option of stealing clothes. Think of it like this. When you run out of clean clothes, you could just go aboard a ship and take someone else's shirt at gunpoint. Maybe even exchange it for your own dirty laundry. A hot bath was something you'd enjoy ashore, and likely offered for a small price at any establishment in town. This was often a special treatment for the sick. William Dampy wrote of an isle where scorbutic sailors were treated by being bathed with special herbs. But if a pirate got sick at sea, his crew would take considerable measures to recover his health. Firstly, the deceased would be quarantined. If the company only had a single ship, the quarantine zone might be a temporary cabin, created amidships using partitions made from wood or canvas. If the company had several ships, one of them would be designated as a hospital. Typically, this was the one least fit for combat. It was large, slow and heavy. Owing to this stability, it simultaneously made it more comfortable to be aboard, allowing the sickly to recover more speedily. The best option was, of course, to bring the sickly ashore and quarantine them in their own tents. But just going ashore wasn't always a possibility when you were on the lookout for ships to plunder. Other measures were taken to recover the sickly. If the crew had access to healing herbs, these would be burned as incense, as was documented by Woods Rogers. They were given special food considered nourishing by their doctors, such as buttered rice with cinnamon, ginger, and sugar. Iguanas were said to be much esteemed by privateers, and their broth was considered especially healthy. Turtles were believed to drive out any such gross humors, and some Jamaicans would undertake a healing vacation, where they traveled to the Caymans and lived only on turtle. Turtle fricassee was a dish often prepared for sickly pirates. You might be surprised that such vehement men would take good care of their comrades. A pirate saw himself as a lord over lesser men and had specifically become a pirate to be treated as such. He expected the right to carry his own arms, to vote in decisions of movement, to take any gold or rum, and for his comrades to ensure his health. If a pirate needed to do a number two, the most common toilet aboard was the head. It was located in the front of the ship. And though this section is no longer used on modern vessels, the name persists as the name for shipboard toilets. Anyway, originally the head was meant as a platform to manipulate the headsails from, but carpenters found it convenient as a toilet. They constructed an overhanging wooden frame, onto which were two or three seats of easement, simple wooden boxes with holes cut into them, on which the sailors sat to defecate into the waters below. The pirate's equivalent of toilet paper was a sort of swab, kept at the end of a rope dangling from under the headrail. It would have seen communal use, so you best hope the ocean washed it clean. Smaller ships might lack a head, or maybe the line was too long. In this case, you could use the chains. Also called channels, these are platforms extending out of the ship's side, and meant to support the rigging. Here you'd squat down with your butt over the water, heels on the chain, and hold tight onto the rattling. If you wanted to take a leak, the best option was to pull down your pants and do it over the side of the ship. Just watch the direction of the wind, lest you soak yourself or a potentially angry shipmate. It's a good way to get a bloody nose. Other ships had the aptly named Pistails, 
which were primitive urinals mounted on the bulwarks below the gunwale. Bulwarks are the sides of the ship, extending like a railing over the deck. The pistol consisted of a wood or metal basin, with a pipe headed below deck, most likely connected to the exterior of the ship. If you wouldn't use the head, chains or pistols, it was possible to just sit on the gunwale at the side or the stern of the ship and do your business that way. I'm sure it would be very fun for the crewmen who would have to clean the filth away from the sides of the ship. We'd probably think that the sea would do most of the work, but this painting does show the ship's crew having to clean the head. But who was the unfortunate sod given the responsibility of cleaning the toilets? The man responsible for cleaning the toilets was called the Liar. Every Monday, whoever was caught lying was declared so at the mainmast by the crew, crying out, A liar, a liar, a liar. The liar had this position for a week, and then he was changed. On pirate ships, cleaning the toilets may also have been relegated to forced men or slaves instead. Ships move around a lot, and having to keep your balance whilst relieving yourself likely resulted in a lot of accidents. Man overboard and such. In a storm, there was just no way you'd go out to the head. Out of fear or just sheer laziness, many sailors found other ways to relieve themselves. Maybe some did it just any way they could in the hold. I'm sure it was a lot of fun for the guy having to clean it up. I imagine that a lot of them did it in the animal pens, since those had to be cleaned of turds anyway. In storms and for those lazy or scared, the most common toilet was the bilge. This was the filthiest part of the ship. Located above the ballast stones, it was a cramped compartment full of water, vital for preserving the ship's balance. All manners of filth would creep through the woodwork and fester in the bilge. It was commonly used as a dumping ground, and of course, a toilet. But be warned, the smell that staled and fested here could grow immeasurably dangerous. One journal confessed how two sailors went down there and were knocked out by the stench. Their comrades had to bring them up into the fresh air, only then could they recover. Any silverware kept close to those malignant vapors were turned black in just a night. It was truly the hell of a ship, and home to its own cast of demons. In the darkest corners lured clacking mandibles and glowing red eyes. The many rats, maggots and cockroaches. They were seemingly immune to the putrid smell, and their hungry jaws were another reason to relieve yourself someplace else. There is a section of the ship called the poop deck. It is very funny, I'm sure, but it has nothing to do with feces. The poop deck is a deck located just above the roundhouse, which is a little structure built in the back of the ship. I failed to mention this in my ship tour video, but I recently discovered that the cabin in the roundhouse was called the Donette. The captain's cabin would be located below it. Anyway, poop, in this case, stems from the French word la poupe, meaning stern, the back of the ship. Poop deck just means stern deck. But it goes farther back than so. La poupe stands from the Latin word poupis, meaning rear. Speaking of the donette, the captains, officers and passengers would often have their own toilets. The most complex of these were a wooden box with a hole leading directly into the sea. More common would be a potty or bucket, in which they would relieve themselves before emptying overboard. Pirates didn't have any concept of recycling or waste disposal. All of their filth was dumped overboard. Unlike our trash, all of it was organic, much to the liking of the creatures of the sea. Sharks and parasitic fish would follow the wake of the ship, feeding off its garbage and excrement. Sharks and fish were not the only ones who found the usage in feces. In the American Pacific, Spanish colonists would collect the white spillings from the cormorant birds, called guano, and use it as manure to fertilize their fields. It was collected, stowed aboard barks, and transported up the South American coast. These barks were sometimes captured by Pacific rowers. Of course, this cargo could be sold, but it usually wasn't of much use to them. A Scottish privateer wrote in his journal, This good day we tie in a small vessel loaded with turd. Much to the amusement of his comrades. And yes, how I presented it on screen is literally how he wrote it. During these times, people would just write stuff how they pronounced it. His captain did, did not find it very funny, and forbade the Scotsman from keeping a journal. According to the author, the captain forbade journal keeping as to prevent any evidence of his crimes. Though this was most likely slander, it could be a contributing reason as to why we don't have any journals from the late Golden Age pirates. Their comrades might have forbidden them from writing down their experiences, 
since it could be used as evidence against them in court. At the last section of the video, things will take a darker turn, as we'll have to discuss the foulest stench to be found at sea. If the weather was hot and the wind still, you could always smell a slave ship nearby. The human cargo was packed and chained neatly together and not allowed to stir from their benches. They were naked, left to sweat and rose in the darkest compartment of the hold for weeks on end. Crewmen sometimes walked down with buckets of cold salt water to shower the slaves, who had to relieve themselves where they sat. Due to the stench, I presume that the captains applied generous amounts of perfume to themselves, as was common for captains aboard Mediterranean galleys, whose conditions were not too dissimilar. Pirates preyed on these ships. They would sometimes sail as far as Africa to capture them, shortly after the slaves had been branded and brought aboard. This was not to liberate the slaves. Either the pirates desired the ship itself, since they had to deliver the human cargo before it expired, these ships were fast. Once refitted with a few more guns, they were excellent privateers. So too was the cargo itself desired. Slaves were some of the most valuable plunder, and pirates would not let go such a chance for a profit. Huge thanks to my generous supporters over on Patreon. Cole Freer, Max Twick, 1660, Michaela Jans, Daniel Stryker, Dog, and Randall Devere. If you'd like to interact with me or fellow pirate enthusiasts, please check out the link to our Discord server in the video description. Hope to see you there. Cheers.